I'm a pretty big fan of storytelling. I think it's one of the most powerful forms of communication humanity has come up with. I mean, ultimately, in my opinion, that's what storytelling is for. It's a way to communicate a thought or idea, a moral, or some kind of message to the consumer of a particular story. Of course, there are stories that don't pretend to have any meaning, they're just there to tell a fun story. That being said, for the most part, stories are typically a vehicle to communicate. But pretty much since the beginning of its conception, traditional storytelling has been a relatively passive experience. When you're consuming a story, you're often listening to it or watching it. You take on the role of a spectator, an outsider with no say in what happens. In some cases, this passive viewing experience actually removes you from the point the story is trying to make. Sometimes getting the full scope of certain ideas a story could be trying to present you with is really limited by a passive viewing experience. I would consider alternative storytelling to be any kind of storytelling that moves the consumer of a story from the role of viewer to participator. You're no longer just experiencing a story, you're taking part in it. This massively increases the amount of depth of certain themes that could be central to a story. In particular, those that can be uncomfortable to deal with. A great example of a story that's enhanced by alternative storytelling is Lisa the Painful. Oh, and it goes without saying, spoilers past this point. Lisa the Painful is an RPG by Austin Jorgensen, also known as Dingaling. The game was released in 2014 and was a sequel to Lisa the First. It's a great game. Look, you can have a fish as a party member. Oh, and here's a goose. The game is brutal. And not just thematically, more on that later, but in difficulty. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Party members come and go like party switch-ups are going out of style. You know, because they, they keep dying. Seriously, Game of Thrones feels like an episode of Sesame Street compared to Lisa. Sometimes you're forced to choose between sacrificing your items or sacrificing your arm. You're forced to choose between sacrificing your friends or sacrificing your second arm. Finishing the game with one arm is considered an achievement, okay? The bar is pretty low here. And it's not like the items are worthless pennies you choose to ignore on the street. These items can mean the difference between finishing the game and restarting from the beginning. The brutality of Lisa the Painful, however, is core to its central premise. Abuse, trauma, sacrifice, pain, and how your pain affects others. This is where the alternative storytelling comes in. There's a reason why the game forces you to make these tough decisions. It's a way to emulate the feeling of being forced to do something out of your control and losing a bit of yourself in the process so that you can actually understand what it's like to go through what the characters go through. This level of interaction between consumer and story just doesn't exist in traditional storytelling. The game follows Brad, a man who now lives in an apocalyptic world without women. Brad was horribly abused by his father in his childhood, bullied, a social outcast. His sister, Lisa, ends up committing suicide due to the abuse she suffered. In the apocalyptic world, Brad finds a baby that ends up being a female and decides to raise her in secret. He names her Buddy. Word of Buddy's existence gets out, and as the last woman and thus humanity's last chance of salvation, she's taken from Brad, who goes on a murderous spree to get her back. It goes without saying, Brad is in a lot of pain. 
The scars of his abuse follow him in every aspect of his life. It's something he can't shake. Visions of his dead sister plague him. Visions of his abuser plague him. This is a man who hasn't even experienced the warmth of a hug. He takes a medication called joy that makes him feel nothing. Because to Brad, feeling nothing is a step up from being in constant pain. And whether he likes it or not, this pain is something he shares with everyone, including the viewer. Brad passes on secondhand trauma to Buddy. He kept her locked away from the world, taught her how to kill people, and was essentially just as abusive as his father, which makes the ending that much more painful to go through. It's one thing to watch as a viewer all that Brad has to go through, but it's another thing to experience it for yourself. On even the most superficial level, the points the game makes about trauma, about sacrifice, about how your trauma will inevitably affect those closest to you are so much more poignant because you play an active role in seeing how Brad's story unfolds. You take on his pain. Chances are, you'll never experience what Brad experienced, but playing as him helps gain even a semblance of what it might be like to have your life destroyed by trauma and abuse, and have that trauma spill over into the lives of those you love. Imagine how much of that depth would be lost in a traditional storytelling setting. Because the truth is, no matter how attached you get to a character, there's always going to be a level of detachment when you take on the role of a spectator. It's hard to truly connect with and feel what a character is actually feeling. And when those feelings are themes in the story, we're missing out on the fullest potential the story can offer. We're pretty selfish beings. We'll do almost anything to get ourselves out of our perceived pain, and the last thing we want to do is to be put in it. But Lisa the Painful is made for you to reflect on your pain, the burdens you have to carry on your shoulders, you're supposed to be thinking about anyone you could have harmed as a side effect to what you've gone through yourself through no fault of your own. No one wants to think about this kind of stuff. No one wants to think about how many people they've harmed just by being alive and by being human. But being forced into that pain with Brad, participating in it, acting out Brad's selfishness at the end of Lisa the Painful with him, brings us onto his level. It brings so much more depth to Lisa's complex and uncomfortable themes that otherwise we could have missed out on. It goes without saying, part of why Lisa the Painful's story is so poignant is because of empathy. Empathy is one of the most important tools in effective communication. Of course it's possible to establish an empathic connection between observer and character in traditional storytelling. Some of the best stories are the ones that do this well. In alternative storytelling, however, the connection between observer and character has a bit of an edge. It's more effective. For the duration of the story, the observer metaphorically becomes the character. The character's catharsis at the end of the story becomes the observer turned participator's catharsis. Ultimately, the take-home message, whatever it was the story was trying to say, sticks to you. Now, more than ever, there are so many opportunities for alternative storytelling. ARGs like Petscop, games, visual novels, we're only just beginning to scratch the surface of this kind of stuff. It's exciting for people who are into storytelling, not just for consumers, but for the storytellers themselves. You absolute nerds. To clarify, I'm not saying one way of storytelling is better than the other, just that there are pros and cons to each method. Sometimes being a spectator enhances a story. Sometimes having distance from the characters is important. Sometimes alternative storytelling is too much work. Yeah, I'll admit it, sometimes I don't want to work to get my entertainment. Sometimes I'd just rather watch than get involved. I don't know, it varies, okay? It's a case-by-case -case basis, and as a storyteller, it's your job to decide which method of storytelling is more appropriate for your project. Alternative storytelling is another tool that can be used to help storytellers communicate their points. It just makes me want to... Well, I guess it just makes me want to have a nice cup of steamed milk and wrap myself in a blanket, really. To conclude this video, I'll just say talking about the effect alternative storytelling has on Lisa the Painful story isn't enough. 
It's kind of like talking about food or color. I can try to explain it, but the best way for you to understand is to just look, just, just play the game, okay? Just do yourself a favor, all right? You deserve this. Listen to me. Hey, you deserve this for yourself. Just play the game.